Our mild winter has been pretty easy on humans here in northeast Wisconsin, but has it also been a little too easy on pests like ticks and mosquitoes? Fox 11 meteorologist Phil DeCastro has that story. Ticks, mosquitoes, and their other bitey, crawly friends aren't anyone's favorite part of our warmer months. But with bitter cold weather hard to come by this winter, does that mean their numbers will explode when we warm up again? UW Green Bay professor and entomologist Mike Draney says it's not that simple. Oh, it seems like a mild winter for us, but it also has been a low snow winter. And that snow actually protects these animals that overwinter in the leaf litter. It's like a blanket over the soil. And so if there's a lot of snow, it doesn't matter how cold it is up here, it's going to be nice down there. If there's no snow, it can get very cold down there. So a low snow winter can actually be harsher for the insects. It also varies from bug to bug. Ticks, for example, are very resilient. And any time we hit 45 degrees or so, Professor Draney says they can perk up. If the weather warms up, they will climb onto the vegetation and start foraging. That is looking for us to grab onto. And so, it, you know, if it's warm enough, such as yesterday in, in Green Bay, you'll have ticks out there. So people get ticks in February. I've even seen ticks recorded from, from January. But when it comes to mosquitoes, more factors come into play. In particular, our precipitation trends lately might be bad news for them. This low snow winter is actually kind of like drought conditions for them. There's not going to be as much water in the springtime, and they'll probably be, that could result in fewer of some kinds of mosquitoes. Ultimately, there are enough variables at play that it's tough to say what impact, if any, our warm winter has had on these familiar foes. Like always, we'll just have to do our best to avoid getting bitten once they start to wake up. Meteorologist Phil DeCastro, Fox 11 News. We're here a little bit because of the unusual weather yeah. that we've seen this winter. And, uh, you know, insects, I'm assuming, feel temperature just uh, like humans do. Um, so when it comes to a warm winter, well, let's start with, you said that there's a misconception out there when it comes to, we're talking pests, things like ticks, mosquitoes, that stuff. Um, there's a bit of a misconception when people think that they die off in the winter. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, I mean, they can, if you have a really harsh winter, sometimes the overwintering populations don't survive as well in a harsh winter, but... Sure. But there's other things that can happen, too. Um, you can get uh, less snow, and that can be a worse winter. You can get, um, you can get uh, a dry, low snow winter, which would result in uh, less water for the mosquitoes in the springtime. Mm -hmm. So it's really complicated. It sort of depends on which life stage is being affected, and it can go all the way back, you know, a year or more. So... We were, you know, when it comes to how they overwinter, you mentioned that overwinter population. It's not like the ticks, the mosquitoes, the, you know, all these bugs that you see all summer. It's not like they die as soon as it freezes. No. Well, what, what are they doing over the winter mostly? Yeah, so every, every species, very few species will migrate. So almost every species has to have some sort of overwintering stage. Yeah. Um, a lot of times it's not eggs because the, a lot of times the insects will make uh, antifreeze to survive the winter. And only the adults or immatures can make the antifreeze, not the eggs. So for many species, it's either an immature stage or an adult stage that somehow survives. Usually below the snow and in the leaf litter is where they survive, where it's a little bit warmer. Okay, gotcha. And so when those bugs, um, you know, they're, they're hanging out over the winter... So it's not like, you know, because I, I, what I hear is people will say, oh, we need that good hard frost to kill off all the bugs and all that other stuff. Is it, is it really killing them or are they mostly, is it just putting them to sleep kind of for the winter? Yeah, I mean, they oftentimes are very resistant to that kind of cold weather. Gotcha. Um, so, you know, certainly an unusual kind of cold snap can increase mortality, but there's so many of them and they reproduce so fast that oftentimes it's not a, a noticeable effect on us. They're, they're certainly well adapted to the winter. And you mentioned, I think in particular, a good example of that is is ticks. Because yeah. you said it doesn't matter what time of the year it is, yeah. you can see them pop up if it gets warm enough? Yeah, for sure. They, they are um, kind of overwintering as immatures and adults, and so if the weather warms up, they will climb onto the vegetation and start foraging, that is looking for us to grab onto. And so, it, you know, if it's warm enough, 
such as yesterday in, in Green Bay, you'll have ticks out there. So people get ticks in February. I've even seen ticks recorded from, from January here in Wisconsin. So. Wow, okay. Um, but moving forward, you mentioned all of the different factors. Just because it's been a warm winter without very much snow, that doesn't necessarily, because, so in some ways, humans might think of this as an easy winter. Yeah. But for bugs, is it really impacting them one way or another too That's much? That's right. It, it all depends on the species because they all have okay. different factors that, okay. you know, that help them or hurt them. Yeah. So we were talking about the, the, oh, it seems like a mild winter for us, but it also has been a low snow winter. And that snow actually protects these animals that overwinter in the leaf litter. It's like a blanket over the soil. And so if there's a lot of snow, it doesn't matter how cold it is up here, it's going to be nice down there. If there's no snow, it can get very cold down there. So a low snow winter can actually be harsher for the insects. Also, we were talking about mosquitoes. They love the water in the springtime and the summertime. This low snow winter is actually kind of like drought conditions for them. There's not going to be as much water in the springtime, and they'll probably be, that could result in fewer of some kinds of mosquitoes in the so, spring. So you're saying without all that snow melt and without all those ponds and that standing water all over the place for that first little bit of May and June or mm -hmm. April and May, yeah. if things don't turn around, it could be a little tougher for them? Yeah, it could be tougher for the mosquitoes. It depends on the species, sure. but yeah, some species definitely need that spring, you know, snow melt in order to get started. And so otherwise they're going to have to wait until summertime rains to, to get going. Gotcha. Um, is there any, um, you know, I don't know if like lake, fl lake flies, things like that, does the winter weather really impact them at all? Or are they pretty dormant uh, yeah. other than the big hatches? That you it's, a, it's a lot more indirect for them because they're, they're under, in an aquatic habitat, they're usually under ice. And so they're kind of protected from the extremes of temperature. Of course, if the water warms up faster, if there's less ice for less period of time, they can get started earlier. So it can affect their populations as well. Sure. I know when it comes to trees and a lot of plants, a lot of times they're not necessarily responding to temperature as much as they respond to day length. Mm -hmm. That's how they kind of time up their calendars, or at least that's what I've yep. been told by people. Absolutely. With the insects, does it pretty much all just come down to temperature? It doesn't really matter what time of the year it is? Um, not, not entirely. Okay. Um, you know, insects certainly oftentimes are capable of responding very rapidly to temperature changes, sure. but they're not going to be fooled. The ones that live up here can't just come out and start their life when it's a 70-degree day because many years it will be cold again. So many times they also have cues such as day, -like, mm -hmm. day length that tells them when it's really spring and not just kind of a sort of a false spring like we maybe got yesterday. Gotcha, right, not just Mother Nature playing a trick on us. Yeah, okay. that's um, right. Anything else that you think, um, you know, pops into your head? You know, uh, I'm, I'm just thinking like more indirect things like, you know, they say, uh, what is it, like like possums love to eat a lot of ticks and things like that, yeah. and bats. Yeah, Without yeah. a harsh winter, is it possible that some of those other ecological effects might trickle down into insect populations? Yeah, um, I, I think the fact that the insects can come out, if it's an early spring, their populations will get going fast, whereas the birds, they're, you know, many of them are down in Texas or down in Panama, mm -hmm. and they are not necessarily capable of responding really rapidly to a early spring. So they might have, there might be a mismatch between when the birds arrive and when their food is, is here. Another thing that you mentioned that I thought was interesting is the, the, um, the water situation. Um, that really has a big effect on plants, but it also affects insects too. The, the, when it's a warm winter, you might think, oh, that's easier for organisms to get through the winter because it's nice and warm. But the plants, they actually will start to transpire, photosynthesize. They'll be losing water if it's a warm winter. But is, if the ground is still frozen, yeah. they can't get any water to replace it. So oftentimes these more mild winters are actually harder for some plants to have winter die off. Same with insects. A lot of times they'll be losing water if it gets warmer, but they can't drink any water until the springtime. And so it can, that can actually cause wintertime mortality, not just necessarily cold weather. So it's interesting. So I, I, There's I, so I, much stuff going on. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I, you yeah. know, I feel like for humans, it's often just as simple as 
Oh, hey, it was nice. I didn't need to shovel my driveway as much. But uh, Yeah, that's right. And we think, you know, being warm-blooded, we just think about, oh, if it's cold, then you feel less comfortable. But for insects, it's more like they don't really care if it's cold as long as they don't freeze. Sure. So for them, it's about avoiding freezing. 